Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at generative fill and some of the ways you can use it. In order to use generative fill, you will need to go to Adobe's website and specially search for and download the beta app. Once you've done that, you can use any image. I have found some examples here on Unsplash and Pixabay. So let's start by adding some things to these bowls. So I'm going to grab my selection tool or lasso tool. And let's add some blueberries. You can see here there's a little movable bar that comes up and I'm going to type in my keyword or phrase and generate. And here in the properties panel, it gives you some variations that you can click through. If you don't like any of those options, you can generate it again or change the prompt. Next, let's add some guacamole. And you can see how it does try to imitate the shadows from the image. So if you go to your layers panel, you'll see that it does create a new layer. And I do want you to note that it does copy parts of the background image. So if I were to move this later, it may not look right in another setting. And this bar can be in the way sometimes. So you may want to pen it or you'll just have to keep moving it. Let's add some tortilla chips. And now let's add some ramen. So those are looking pretty realistic. Let's go ahead and do another generate. So it's given us three new options, which we can sort through with these arrows or here in the properties panel. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And the more generative layers you create, it does take up more processing power on your computer. Also, the more editable generative layers you add, it will increase your file size quite a bit. So you may want to save copies or a flattened version by right clicking on the layer and rasterizing the layer. And now if I save, the file was 10 megabytes and now it's reduced. It does also depend on your file size to begin with. All right, here's a different orientation of a bowl. I'm just going to use the lasso tool to try to contain it. Let's do another one with some salad. And in this case, you can see my selection was more broad and it didn't do the best job of creating the rim of the bowl. These are looking, or this middle one's looking the best. And again, if I go to move this or transform it, it's not going to look right for scale. So you may have to be more refined in your selection. All right, so let's take another instance and let's say I need to expand this image a little bit more vertical. So I'm going to get my crop tool, adjust the height, and grabbing my selection marquee, I'm going to select this top space and a little bit of the background. And without typing in anything, I'm just going to do generate. And that's done a nice job of extending the chair and even attempting to add the top. And we can look at a few adjustments. All right, let's see if we can add some sunglasses to this dog. I'm going to create a new layer, get my brush tool. And let's just paint the area on that new layer of where I want these sunglasses to go. So if I do hold down command and click on that layer and hide it, now I'm going to type in And now it's given me some options. Or we can add more of a description. And 
<laughs> All right, some of those are fun. All right, let's take a look at this one. Let's add some eyeshadow. Oh, that one even closed her eye. Well, those are pretty, but I do want her eye to still be open. So let's take the lasso tool or a new layer with your brush. And I only want eyeshadow to be more like that. And you can be more specific and reduce your brush size. So I'm going to command click on the layer to select it, hide the layer. And let's try again. All right, so that time we got a little bit more realistic with the eye open. And you're always welcome to use your adjustment layers. If I go to my black arrow V, and I can hold down shift and my plus and minus arrows to filter through this layer effect. And then I can paint directly on the brush. Let's go ahead and do generate again on that to see what we get. And it does attempt to match the color scheme. This one's a little bit more vibrant than it should be. Or you can quickly apply one and then holding down option, apply that only to the generative layer. All right, let's create more of a scene here. Using my selection marquee, let's add a bouquet of white flowers with a clear vase. So here are some options. And let's add a dog laying on the floor. Or I think you can just do dog lane. <laughs> These are pretty funny. Okay, and let's do a cat. Let's do a gray cat. So those look a little bit weird. Let's try Let's try to get more specific. There we go. That's looking much better. Still pretty high contrast for the overall image. And one more thing. Let's add some artwork on the wall. Those are pretty intense for the area, but we could continue to work with that. All right, how about we add some snow to the sky? So just with the entire image, I'm going to do snow falling from sky. And it doesn't add it over the background image, so it's giving me a layer that I'm going to have to actually work with more. I'm going to have to work on the overlay to get that more realistic. And I also want to show you, let's grab the lasso tool. Let's say I want to add fog. So unfortunately, it changes the image quite a bit. You can see we don't have our original cliff side here even. How about we add a house here on the slope?
And now we've got a nice little cabin. Again, you'd have to work on the color. I do want to note that depending on the area selection, when it generates the image, it may be way out of proportion. So let me do a generative fill and we're going to see how it fits into the scene. So this makes the subject larger in the foreground. And you can see like on this one, it's like, whoa, what's going on there? But this time, let's do a smaller selection. And you can see the difference just based on the area of selection. So this one is a good example where we have a very different perspective. So let's add a vase of flowers on this desk. And you can see how it's done quite well at matching the perspective. And you may want to try different phrases. So let's say we want a square flower pot. And I don't know what's going on there. That one looks pretty weird. I hope this video helped you get a better idea of how to use the generative fill features and some of its limitations. If this video helped you out, please like the video and subscribe for more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.